As COVID-19 ran rampant across the United States in 2020, local newsrooms across the country cut back, even as they covered the biggest story in decades. As far as readers, we saw that skyrocket during the pandemic. Um, so at, at the same time that revenue was falling, readers were spiking. It was kind of this um, dilemma that I'm sure a lot of news organizations faced. It was a catastrophic and uncertain time for American newsrooms. During the pandemic, more than 70 local newsrooms have closed across the country. This includes newspapers that have served their communities for decades. Often these papers shut with little notice. But the problem existed long before the pandemic. Since 2004, about 1,800 newspapers have closed across America. Newspapers have struggled to make money with the collapse of print advertising as readership moved online. Then, the digital advertising market quickly became dominated by tech companies like Google or Facebook. Today, some of the largest newspaper chains in the country, Tribune, McClatchy, and Media News Group, are owned, controlled by, or indebted to hedge funds or private equity groups. In fact, hedge funds and other financial firms control half of the daily newspapers in the United States, according to a recent analysis by the Financial Times. By the end of March 2020, at least 106 news outlets across the U.S. experienced cutbacks. About 1,200 more newsrooms that were owned by larger media conglomerates such as Gannett, Lee Enterprises, and Adams Publishing Group were affected by cuts as well. But the newspaper industry was in trouble long before the pandemic. The total estimated circulation of U.S. daily newspapers has steadily declined since the 1970s. Newspapers once reached more than 63 million Americans during their peak in 1973. Since 2018, they reached 23 million people during weekdays. Sunday papers were only slightly more popular, reaching 30 million people. Even before the pandemic, many newsrooms were really struggling financially. And unfortunately, most people who depend on newspapers hadn't realized that at all. What they noticed was a diminishment of the local news that was relevant to them. As a result of that, we've lost a fourth of our newspapers in the U.S. since 2005. Uh, that's 2,100 newspapers. Most of those have been in small communities. So when you lose a local newspaper in a small or mid-sized community, you're losing the person that shows up to cover the local school board or to cover the county commissioner or to give you the information during a COVID crisis of how many people are infected and whether it's even safe to go to the local grocery store. In the past, newspapers revenue mostly came from print advertising. Now it's almost impossible to make money from print advertising as the internet changed the economics of the newspaper business. Readership moved online and so did the advertising. By 2015, 2016, uh, Facebook and Google had basically cornered the market and were attracting almost as much as 75% of the digital revenue in even the smallest markets. That means that newspapers, digital startups, television, all legacy media is basically fighting over the digital scraps. And you put that together and that's just not enough to sustain local newsrooms. Getting people to convert from print to digital is really difficult. That's one transition. A second transition is getting to switch from a print format to a website format. So there are two transitions newspapers usually try to make at the same time. According to Abernathy, newspapers in small and mid-sized markets typically had operating margins of between 20 and 30 percent during the 1990s. Most newspapers today, even if profitable, operate in the low tens or single digits. Local newspapers were slow to adapt to the changing digital era. Many bought into the idea that news should be free during the dot-com boom in the late 90s. This hurt many newsrooms. And now it's an uphill battle for newspapers trying to bridge the digital divide. If you go to borrow money, you're borrowing at high interest rates because revenue has continued to decline for many newspapers. So it is a, a kind of a catch-22, whereas you can have very enlightened owners who want to do the right thing and want to make the transition, but it's also hard to know how to make the bet. Gannett, one of the largest newspaper owners, offered voluntary buyouts to all of its employees in October 2020, 
One of the large newspaper chains, Community Newspaper Holdings, had layoffs, pay cuts, and furloughs. Family-run newspaper chain McClatchy furloughed about 4.4% of its staff at 30 papers. Then it was acquired by New Jersey hedge fund Chatham Asset Management in September 2020. Even the Wall Street Journal, which actually runs a lucrative newspaper business, hired consulting firm Deloitte to make its business more lean. This would mean more cuts and people losing their jobs. Now, the new owners of many of these struggling newspapers are hedge funds and private equity firms. In fact, hedge funds and other financial firms control half of the daily newspapers in the United States, according to a recent analysis by the Financial Times. Newspaper conglomerates like Tribune, McClatchy, and Media News Group are owned, controlled by, or indebted to financial firms. Their goal is financial return. So, and they're going to get a return for their shareholders one way or the other, whether it's usually cutting costs or whether it's um, uh, building up revenue. And in a declining industry, the easiest way to get a return for shareholders is to cut the cost. Following the 2008 recession, a collection of hedge funds and private equity firms started aggressively buying hundreds of newspapers. They would then quickly cut costs by laying off staff, freezing wages, or reducing benefits. Profits made from these methods were not often reinvested. Instead, they were used for management fees, shareholder dividends, and to pay off debt. New York hedge fund Alden Global Capital is infamous for its aggressive cost-cutting tactics. It buys struggling newspapers on the cheap, aggressively cuts costs, and reaps the profits that can still be made from advertising. A recent investigation by the Washington Post found that in 2019, investigators at the U.S. Labor Department believed that Alden Global Capital might have mismanaged $294 million of its newspaper's employees' pension savings by putting them into its own funds. In a statement to CNBC, Alden said the U.S. Department of Labor's Employee Benefits Security Administration made no conclusive findings, all assertions of wrongdoing were disputed, and the EBSA closed its investigation following actions taken voluntarily by Media News Group and planned fiduciaries. Alden just won the bid to buy Tribune Publishing, handing it control of nine large daily papers, including the Chicago Tribune and New York Daily News. The $635 million deal makes Alden the second largest newspaper owner by circulation. We've seen some of the private equity companies close newspapers in Arkansas because they got everything out. They probably got a good return on their investment. And that's not to cast, you know, uh, disparagement against those companies. It's, you know, it's just part of the capitalist system. It's got a huge cost for society. Absolutely. Alden isn't the only hedge fund involved in the newspaper business. New Jersey-based Chatham Asset Management bought family-run news chain McClatchy in September 2020. Gannett, the largest newspaper chain in the country, was managed by hedge fund Fortress Investment Group, but negotiated an early exit by paying nearly $30 million in December 2020. Private equity firm Apollo Global Management is also buying up dozens of local TV stations to compete with Sinclair and Fox. I think the biggest threat is that um, we continue to see uh, these large chains uh, uh, buy up newspapers and see them primarily as a business. Uh, newspapers in our country have his, been historically important because they have been not just businesses, but they are businesses protected by the First Amendment because they provide us with the news and information that we need uh, in order to make wise decisions about the quality of our life, the quality of our government, and uh, the quality of the fu of future generations uh, and what kind of life they will uh, experience. Not all local papers went under during COVID-19. Journalist Walter Hussman is the owner and publisher of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. It's the largest and oldest newspaper in the state. He said he realized in 2018 that the newspaper was going to lose money for the first time in 25 years. People really want the paper. They really need the paper to find out what their governor's doing, what the state legislature's doing. And so uh, I said, well, instead of just taking the paper away from them because it's so unprofitable, let's try to find a profitable way to do it. 
we just stop delivering the paper, but deliver the exact replica of the newspaper on an iPad. After some trial and error, he was able to offer the Arkansas Democrat Gazette to its subscribers through an iPad subscription service. Hussman says about 70% of its roughly 72,000 subscribers have all converted to the iPad subscription service. It costs $34 a month, and it's the same price as the previous print subscription. The Gazette still prints the Sunday paper for those who want it, but now it no longer prints the paper from Monday to Friday. The newsroom still isn't profitable, but according to Hussman, it has had positive cash flow for 2021 so far. Key to the whole thing is that we are providing more value to our subscribers, so they'll pay $34 a month. Well, how are we providing more value? Not only are we giving them the newspaper in a format they end up liking better, but now they can do emails, they can surf the web, they can read books, they can watch movies on that device that is ours. There's also the success of the Charlotte Agenda. It's a digital news startup that was recently bought by Axios for nearly $5 million. The Charlotte Agenda started out with just an email newsletter, website, and an Instagram account. But it created content that resonated with the people in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's really about um, doing what's best for the reader. We give the news really in, in a clean way, and we do that on Instagram as well. We, we're not saying, um, you know, you must click this link to read the story. We're just going to put the story on Instagram. And so I think like it, it is a hustle. Like they started with, with nothing and it grew steadily. It, it wasn't like some magic wand that I think someone can wave and replicate. The Charlotte Agenda also worked to set up annual partnerships with businesses to yield a steady stream of ad revenue. That helped the publication make money. The business was also hit by the pandemic, but at the same time, readership increased, so they hired more people on the editorial team. By the end of 2021, Axios Local will be in 14 total markets. Cities like Nashville, Atlanta, Austin, Dallas, Chicago, DC, Philly, and Columbus. In 2013, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos bought the Washington Post for $250 million. At the same time, the Post was facing years of decline. Bezos had no experience in the newspaper business, but he knew something about the internet and how to shift readership online. Through an aggressive approach to revamp the Post's digital presence, the legacy newspaper revamped its website and mobile apps. It created software called Arc, which gives it better analytics and marketing features for the publication but each local newsroom has its own set of challenges. Some are independently owned and struggling or thriving. Some are owned by national organizations or, or hedge funds and struggling or thriving. Um, so there's just like so many different possibilities. We're a regional newspaper, a statewide newspaper, one of the 50 largest newspapers in America. We can't make it on five or six or $10 a month. Uh, the New York Times can, but they got millions of subscribers. What's killing the newspaper business is not just, oh, well, you know, we don't get enough profit margin. It's what's killing is just not enough revenue, you know, because advertising is going down so much. This is a public trust that is, is vitally important in addition to being a business. So the hope for me is that we see more civic minded uh, individuals wanting to step forward and either own a newspaper or create a, a local news organization that serves those needs and expectations and has the financial backing in order to invest to transform that news organization so it is remains relevant and viable in the 21st century.